Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, artist, speaker, and co-founder of Beautify Earth, Ruben Rojas. And now, Rich Redman. What's up, rock and rollers? It's that time. Yep, another exciting episode of The Rich Redman Show coming to you from sunny Los Angeles today. And this is the show where we talk about all things music, motivation, and success. And I'm talking to actors, comedians, musicians, producers, anybody in the creative arts that's making an impact in the world. And I'm so excited today to in- to interview and introduce you to our guest. And today's guest is an artist, a muralist, a speaker, an author, a clothing designer, our new friend from right here in sunny Los Angeles, Ruben Rojas. How are you, man? I'm doing amazing. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And thank you so much for making the time. I know you're a new dad, so you're probably tired and busy. I mean, it, it adds a whole new element to your day, right? My day's already really fluid, but now you've got this baby. And yeah. It's baby time. It's yeah. Schedule, but we're making the best of it. It's, it's, it's great. It's amazing. It's beautiful. And if you guys are just listening, you're not watching this. We are actually uh, in Ruben's, he's in his studio and there's just paint everywhere, colors, vibrant. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. What a treat. And I got to say, I, I, you got on my radar because our friend Amy Pathrath did an amazing segment on you for Spectrum One News recently. And you can watch Amy's segments every Tuesday here in Los Angeles on Spectrum One from 8.20 to 8.30 a.m. And she likes to interview and highlight amazing people like yourself that are making a difference in the world. So thank you, Amy. And man, I, gotta, I, I just got to say, um, you are beautifying Los Angeles one wall at a time. And I was looking at the wiki. I was looking at your amazing website. Are you up to 75 murals now? What's the number now? Oh, no, we're more than that. We'll probably <laughs> double that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Love, love um, I think last year there was 35 or 38 or something like that alone. So. Yeah. So and so, in, your murals can be found in Paris, L.A., New York, Florida, and Mississippi. And it's just really, it's this is one of your quotes: "A wall is an opportunity for an artist to spark a conversation, inspire a community, and to create change." And the theme of your work, I love it. It's because it's so colorful and colors. I think it brings out positivity, it brings out enthusiasm, it brings out change. People love color. And a big theme of your work is love. Talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah, so, so the overall theme is about love and living through love. So I use live through love just like Nike uses just do it, right? You, you've got to do it. It's an active state. It's an active practice. It's not easy. We're not talking about, you know, sunshines and unicorn love here. We're not talking about hearts and bubbles we're talking about like i'm having a bad day instead of wallowing in that let me look at why or what can i do to change it and how does love become my compass to move it forward right i think we've heard the metric or the phrase use fear as your compass well i say use love as your compass you know we operate out of love or we operate out of fear then you turn on the tv and you're mostly seeing fear if you're watching the news right right yeah, I, I kind of made a habit of not watching a lot of news over the years and just, I don't know, through the pandemic, I watched a little bit more and I kind of want to wean myself off of that a little bit. But um, What else was there to do during the pandemic? <laughs> Back at home. <laughs> well, you were getting out there painting walls. Yeah. And so some of these, if you drive around uh, Los Angeles, these are some of, the, some of the themes you'll see on the walls. It's great stuff, positive stuff like you belong here, dreamer. Love rises. Do what you love. On Melrose, I love you. You belong here. Imagine uh, at the Mark Twain High School. So not only are you beautifying Los Angeles, you're also going to schools and kind of like, why schools? Why schools? You know, schools look like prison. It's <laughs> terrible. Have you walked in there? I mean, how does that inspire a child? But at the same time, what about the admin and the staff and the teachers that have been there for 15 plus years? They deserve a little bit of color inspiration as well. So it's a good opportunity. It's a good campus, uh, canvas. And we do it through my nonprofit, Beautify Earth, and my one of our co-founders, Sergio, 
is the one that really spearheads the beautify education uh, aspect of what we're doing. And the schools just look better with color. It's, yeah. it's just the kids are happier. Now, there was one in Mississippi where you took your team to, and it was almost like a, a vision board. Tell us about that. The kids came up, and they were putting their hopes mm -hmm. and dreams in paint. You hand them a mm -hmm. paintbrush, and I'm sure they were apprehensive at first, and then all of a sudden, something magical happens. Yeah, so um, that was a project with American Express, and they went out there because of the American Express Serve program, which was a prepaid card they were doing, and mostly – you know, American Express is kind of geared toward affluent. So this was a way for them to get in there and see that there's a problem with check cashing places, right? These places take 25, 40 cents of the dollar and every dollar this family needs. So it's a little bit of a little criminal there. So they came in for financial literacy as a previous financial advisor. That was really awesome. And that was actually my fourth mural that I ever painted. And the notion was, let's go in and paint a mural that talks to the community that's there. And I painted the little girl looking out into, you know, the horizon or whatever she's looking at on a stack of books, because it was about that senior class that was graduating. And the board I painted was goals and dreams. And I spoke to them about what's the difference between a goal and what's the difference between a dream. Mm. So we all dream. And to make that dream a goal, you just got to write it down. You got to tell someone to hold yourself accountable. So they were all then asked, hey, paint in what you want to be, who you want to become, where you want to go, what do you want to see? Now I'm holding you accountable to that. The community is holding you accountable to that. Your peers are holding you accountable to that. And that mural is, you know, proudly living out there. It's actually on Ground Zero Blues Club. So Morgan Freeman owns that with, with the mayor down there. So wow. it's a really cool place to, to just be able to paint an experience. And just going – and I've, I've been to the coast of America. I've never been to, like, middle America or Clarksdale or just Mississippi. And wow. it was really eye-opening for me. Yeah, as someone, as, as someone like I've been living on a tour bus for 27 years, and we visit a lot of middle America. So you see a lot of that. The Rich Redmond Show will be right back. Those who are self-employed, especially musicians, think homeownership is unattainable. For Bruce Klein, it took seven years to purchase his first home as a self-employed working musician. But once he did, man, was it satisfying. So he decided he wanted to help other musicians and creatives gain that same satisfaction. Bruce earned his lending license and is now helping people avoid the mistakes he made on his seven-year journey. If you're a self-employed musician, he can help. Go to MusiciansMortgage.com, powered by Movement Mortgage. Bruce Klein, NMLS, number 1465948. Movement Mortgage supports equal housing opportunity. NMLS, number 39179. NMLS, ConsumerAccess.org. Henry Ford once said that if you need a machine and don't buy it, then you will ultimately find that you have paid for it and don't have it. Nothing could be truer about energy-efficient LED lighting in your business. At Big Dot Lighting, we can show you how a portion of your savings from a commercial LED lighting upgrade will be paid for in hardly any time at all. Until then, you're paying for them anyway. Book a no-cost lighting energy assessment with Big Dot Lighting. At least 30% of your utility bill is waiting to be saved. Go to BigDotLighting.com. Are you a drummer looking to expand your drumming vocabulary or take your career to the next level? You can connect with me for one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons and consultations that are now 30% off. I cover topics like styles, reading music, the Nashville number system, charting, music business 101, and career guidance. Simply send me an email at booking at richredmond.com to schedule. And for more information on all of my products and services, visit richredmond.com. This is the Rich Redman Show. You're a speaker as well. You have a lot to share. I watched your TED Talk, Venice Beach, TEDx. Killer. You guys can find it on YouTube. Um, I like it. It was just, it was like short and sweet because it's supposed to be like somewhere between like eight and 15 minutes because I kind of like wrote one. I'm trying to wait for the world to kind of come back so I can do it in person. But I, I uh, encourage everybody to check that out. It's called Taking Back Our City one wall at a time where you discuss positivity, love, and ambition. And so you're, you've been, some of your clients are like Tom's, Reebok, American Airlines. Is that like an hour talk? Is that, is that about, about the length of your speech? You know, the, the talks have been all different. Um, yeah. 
in the pandemic, I was actually getting more of that. I had three nice big talks that involved art and actually designing a lot of stuff for the conference. So right. it was an activation and a mural. So it's not just going up there and talking. But a lot of the stuff I've gone into a company or so, it's a lot of Q&A, actually. And what we start realizing is they ask me the question on how I solve a problem. And then they reinterpret it and how they want to solve that problem. So like I spoke to a tech company, they're like, how would you solve this or look at this? And then we got into a back and forth on that. Oh, I so like it's not that. like your typical keynote. Um, you know, one day that'll be there where the whole story's in. The TED, the, the TED Talk was really like, hey, you've got eight minutes and that's all you get. So keep it super short and sweet and poignant because um, there's an origin story and, and more. Yeah. But well, you got a roaring different. applause at that event, man. So that probably had to give you, if you were nervous at all, I never saw it. And now you're moving. And I love the fact that, you know, when you're doing these keynotes, you're saying it's not, a, it's not your, it's not your typical keynote. I mean, it's better because you have something so tangible and like I play drums during my keynote and people love the drums because it goes, it's part of our DNA and, you know, and so is creativity and artistic expression man so i think it's going to be in a you're going to be on fire with that stuff man very Thank very you. cool and you're wearing one of your hoodies i love your clothing line tell us about your clothing line man i'm compelled you know now that i follow you i get these amazing facebook ads you're doing great with the marketing man the ads are fantastic you know and so i want to pick up some uh i wore so many hoodies this year i was never a hoodie guy but then like you know coronavirus made me a hoodie guy <laughs> Tell us yeah. about your clothing line. Well, first of all, I love hoodies. The, <laughs> um, the clothing line, so it, it really started with in 20, I think 19, early 2019, I painted a mural that says, love yourself. It's a heart full of love and it said yourself. And I'm like, what if before I post and unveil this mural, I make a t-shirt? So I had someone print a t-shirt real quick. So when I posted the mural, I wore the shirt and kind of launched it together. And then that sold, you know, a good amount of shirts off a of post. And I'm like, oh, there's something here. And I've always been in a fashion. I've always liked it. So there's, you know, I have this long to-do list of many, many things. And there, one thing is just putting a, a design on, but like I'm cutting and sewing. I'm creating stuff from scratch right. to be able to get this pattern on things. I can't just buy it off the rack and print it. Like I have to create it and research the fabric. So. So in year one, this has definitely expanded beyond uh, just a graphic on a T-shirt. But um, not everyone could see my murals. Not everyone can own an original piece of work. Sure. But being able to wear the clothing and support the mission and living through love, that's really what it comes down to. And it's, it's I say, this is much more than a clothing line. This is much more than slapping some graphics on a T-shirt for you to wear it. This is my life and how I choose to live through love. And I'm inviting everyone to live through love. Like, I see this one day being as big as the swoosh and live through love being as big as just do it. And I always refer back to Nike because people get it. And right. it's got a really cool story. And as an athlete my whole life, I mean, I love Nike. So, um that's it. And it keeps growing and it keeps expanding. And, and I'm like, I want to try this and I want to try this. And it's really making me, how do I apply my art to the clothing? Like how, how do I really integrate it into everything that I'm doing? Yeah. And again, not just slap on some graphics. So, yeah. Well, you got a new customer here. I'm going to pick up some stuff. I actually wanted to wear it for the interview. I said, I don't know if it'll be delivered in time. So, so if after you're this, local, it could have happened. Maybe. I know. No, we're, we're, we're going to make it happen, man. And then even a book, you have a book and it's almost like a positive journaling kind of like self-exploration, self-improvement, self-growth. Tell us about that. Now you're an author. Yeah. So that's super cool. Um, so I used to release poetry under a pseudonym. It was just Ben. So Ruben Ben. And I created a, an Instagram account and I started posting and posting and posting and I got a pretty solid following. But the way that came about is you used to read my wife, my poetry. And then she's like, Hey, I follow this RM Drake guy. He's got a ton of followers and I buy all his books on Amazon. You can do this. But that was like in 2016. So we finally put this thing together. So during that pandemic, one day I sat down and I took a journal that's similar to the size of the book and I just wrote it out all in one day, sent it to my friend, like, here's the book I want to publish. And she loved it. She's like, okay, let's do it. And it's, it's a book of my poetry and it's a self-love journal. 
And I believe that everything comes from loving yourself. And it's, it's hard. Like, we're not as gentle as we are to ourselves as we are to other people. Why are we nicer to other people than we are to ourselves? These are questions to ask. And that doesn't mean don't be nice to other people. That's not what I'm saying. But in some cases, we have this whole self-internal conversation with ourselves. So simple stuff, simple exercises, like write yourself a love letter. And there's some blank pages. Huh. You know? Well, you're so, making us look bad. You're reading your poetry to your, to your wife. I, I, you know, all of us got to pick up the pen here, guys, and step this up. <laughs> so I shouldn't tell you I proposed by painting a mural. Then. I, I saw that. That was epic. I saw the video. Um, speaking of painting these majestic, how do you decide what wall you're going to paint? And as the job comes together, you know, I have a vision of you're just out there by yourself, but you do have people that are helping you, right? Sort of. Not really. <laughs> because it's daunting. Once you, once you, you say to yourself, okay, I've got to paint this beautiful thing on this massive canvas. And so I would be painting and I would have to step back. Is there a lot of that where it's back and forth? There is a lot of that. And in a lot of my work, I do have it pre drawn out and ready to go. So once I draw it onto the surface, I'm just kind of filling in. But when I start changing and, and doing stuff, so last week I was painting a fully abstract mural, similar to this style, right. across a home that was, I don't know, full block long. So there was a lot of stepping back because I had to see how it was moving and flowing across the, the property. But there was, I had no idea what, I, I just knew I was going to start with blue in the corner. And then it became what it became. We'll share it at a later point when we're ready to unveil it. But there is that walking back and forth and then sitting and like, where am I going to take it? And this is going, or if I know exactly what I'm doing, like the flag, for example, like, okay, here's the design, fill it in. That's great. Yeah. Then I kind of know. Yeah, there's got to be some math involved there. <laughs> a little bit of math. I, I have never used so much math. I, I use more math than this than when I was in finance. Yeah, so well, tell us about that background. So you were, you were in the finance industry, and was there a moment that you said, I'm, I'm over this. I, I need something different. Well, we got to go a little bit further into the past before sure, we take get us, there. Yeah, okay. So I studied, I went to college to be a doctor. My path was an orthopedic surgeon. That's what wow. I wanted to be. That's, that's what I thought I was going to become. Clearly, it didn't happen. Um, after I graduated college, a buddy said, come try out real estate. Made a lot of money month one. I was like, oh my gosh, I think I'll do this. It's, you know, half a million in debt, bold, fat, 10 years later, maybe in my practice or now real estate and making a lot of money, right. you know? So I went down that path and, and I did well. And, you know, I was in my early twenties and you know, what happens when you come around with a lot of money in your early 20s and you're in America and you're measured by what you kind of own? So I got a house and I got a boat and I have the fancy cars with the big rims and the watches with diamonds, like Ooh. all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and it happens and it's part of it. And I don't regret any of that. Um, I was still very giving with my money. It wasn't like... So a lot of my friends didn't make that much. So I'm like, I had, okay, let's, I'll get the table at the club or, or I'll help with this or I'll help with that. And I saved a lot of the money. So it wasn't like I burned it all. I saved half of everything. But 2008 comes. Everyone knows what happens in 2008. Yeah. You know, business goes to shambles. You're laying people off. You're trying to stay afloat. Had to short sale a house. Got rid of everything. Bankruptcy found myself like, what do I do next? Where's everyone at? Um, I'm still me, but like, I don't need all these things. So I started realizing like, why do I have all these things? All these things are more stress. All these things are just things to be cool or popular. I'm like, I don't need all that to be cool or popular. Like, why do we think we need these things? Where, what was inside me that wasn't whole or complete or what was missing? And uh, didn't solve there at that moment. But then I ended up in finance. I started doing really well. Five years into that, I'm like, oh, no, I'm in the same situation. I'm in a business where the carrot is money. And you're being validated by money. And I hated it. 
I did like it. You know, I was waking up depressed. I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to go to work. And I'm like, am I depressed? Is this, and I shouldn't be. I'm healthy. I'm successful. I have everything in the way I live in LA. Like, why am I feeling this way? You know? And I end up going to a, a leadership workshop, doing some emotional intelligence work. That's mm-hmm. where I met my buddy, Evan. Evan saw me sketching a design that became the hoodie for our class that then he said, we need to make that a mural. And that paint, that started the first mural. Wow. So in that I started doing the work and, and figuring out like, like love over fear and love is the answer. Like let's use love as, as this metric. And then over the next few years, I was half in finance, half in art, trying to figure it out. I call it mediocre hell. It was like a, terrible few years because I know I didn't want to do this finance thing but I had no idea what this art thing would look like so I'm like I'm I'm kind of in a worse pickle than what I was previously because before I'm like I'm just in a funk now I'm like I just like you know it's like well here I can eat here I don't know and then you figure that out and I finally stopped going to the office I just didn't go anymore and this exploded burned the ships you burn the ships and you and you move forward. What was the very first mural? Where what's the location and the and the message? It's on Lincoln and Pier. Mm. Um, it's still there, and it's across the street from a Starbucks. And on the left, it says, "Who will you be?" On the right, it's got my silhouette like this and an outline of a heart, very faint. You can barely tell, and like eighty words: worthy, responsible, gratitude, love, leader. Um, Amor, joy, happy, like all these things, everything about living through love. And the premise behind this, before I knew the stats or the power of a mural, before I knew any of that, I'm like, well, like, what if somebody looks at this wall, walks into Starbucks? And prior to walking in, they would have thought, you know, I woke up today, I hate that I'm going to work. And they're angry. They're angry at the barista that wakes up at four to be there at five to make you your coffee. And they don't want to feel beat up because they, they're like, I'm not, I'm tired too. And this person's just being angry, but it's not about the barista. And it's not about this person. That person is just not happy. But if they look at this wall and they're like, you know what, today I'm going to take responsibility. I'm going to be grateful and I'm going to make someone smile. And then they walk in and instead of like, I'm tired and angry, I have to go to work. They're like, you know what, I am all those things, but Thank you for making me my coffee because by the time I get to my office, I'll be caffeinated, right? Yeah. And I'm like, that could create a spiral effect. That can start affecting people. And then later, I'm like, 40,000 people drive by this wall. That's 40,000 people that could potentially have this effect. Yeah. If you're near a Starbucks, that's a good location to positively affect people. Yeah. So (laughs) I, I didn't set out with like, live through love from day one or how this was going to be. But from day one and from mural after mural after mural, it all fed into what it's become. And I think that's just, a, you know, you could say I was listening to the universe. I was listening to whatever is guiding me and I was just letting it move me forward. And now you look back and you're like, whoa. Yeah. I, I, I feel, I feel you as a kindred spirit because I, I really like to tap into that idea of the law of attraction and you reap what you sow and you get back what you put out into the universe and that positive message and, and just waking up on the right side of the bed every day, you know? And so I feel like you're, you're really impacting people, man. Incredible, incredible, incredible story. So I'm glad that you got out of finance, man. I'm glad you got out of real estate. You, I, you, you found your calling, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm glad I got out of all that too. But I'm also glad that I went through it because that's what got me here. Yeah, it gives you the gratitude and the and the focus to to move forward, man. Who who are your artistic influences, or did you just find that it just it was in you and it? it how does that work? Like for me as a drummer, I you know, was listening to certain guys coming up that I just that resonated with me, and then I soaked it up and became part of my DNA and was able to. When it came out, it was like my own version of that. Yeah, so we've all probably heard this, and when you start looking at it, nothing is original. We've been around for so long, and if energy recycles itself within us, you know, I could be doing this here, and someone could be doing this in Turkey, and we do not know each other, never seen each other, never seen our work. It doesn't matter. You're just on that same frequency, let's call it. 
So there's always that in thinking about that before you think of like, hey, they're copying me exactly. I'm like, no, maybe they vibrate the same way. But I've always been an artist. I've always doodled. I've always sketched. You know, my mom put us in oil painting classes and charcoal classes and drawing classes. So when I was young, I remember just paint, uh, drawing comic book covers, you know, Wolverine all the time, X-Men, yeah. Marvel care. I loved all that stuff. Yeah. And then uh, there was a kid in my neighborhood who's kind of a graffiti kid. So that got me into like graffiti and tagging. I didn't go and do it illegally. I did it in my books, but that style of work. Um, and I used to do names and book covers for people in school. And I would doodle my notes. And then all around my notes were just doodles and all kinds of craziness. So it, that was always kind of there. It was always in me. I don't know if I have one particular person that, that I would look up to per yeah. se, but I, I just take it all in. Do you listen to music when you're, when you're working? Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah. It, I would think it would be hard for you to get anything done because people would be so curious and be, the, the neighborhood folks would come in like, hey, can I help you? Like, what's going on there? That, that does happen a lot. Or people message me and I'm like, look, I appreciate it. I love it. And we've done big volunteer days where like I sketched it out, come help me paint it in. Ah. But the cleanup and detail work afterwards takes a little bit longer. And uh, it's fun and it's awesome. But you, you, sometimes you just got to stay focused and keep pushing through. Absolutely. What, what's next for you? What's on the horizon, man? You're already impacting the world in such a major way. Um, I, you know, I don't know. This, continue to grow this. So yeah. that's, that's the thing. Probably, you know, a more in-depth book of the journey at some point. Like mm -hmm. um, sculptures are happening. So we got oh, these really? little, the first mini one's going to be coming out. Oh, nice. That's so beautiful. I have, I have some big ones, some eight-footers that are out there. Uh, jewelry. I'm, I had a necklace, and now I'm going to release the earring. I don't know. There's just all kinds of things. Who knows what's going to happen next? That's awesome, man. Well, you got a customer here, and now it's my mission in life to go to drive around L.A. and see some of these locations. Thanks so much, man, for joining us. It's just a, just a powerful thing you're doing to the universe, man. You're affecting people in such a positive way. And, uh, man, I love it, and I know that I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hey, everyone, check out RubenRojas.com. And then on the socials, it's just your name, right, on all the, all the platforms? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I like, my name. Yeah, I like how people will pose in front of your stuff, and they'll tag you. And it's like there's, there's a couple murals around Nashville that's, you know, you got the angel wings and stuff, and all the tourists do their thing. So that's got to be pretty great to have that social interaction with your fans. That's one of my favorite parts, especially when there's just the awesome, I'm posing, this is really cool. And then there's the, I'm posing, and they get very vulnerable. Like, I've had women talk about their rape. I've had men talk about alcoholism. I've had people talk about suicide. And I'm like, that's why. That's why I have to keep doing it. So it gets much deeper than just the photo. And the fact that they'll post the photo and share that, I'm floored. I'm like... That's, that's what it's about. That's incredible, man. Congratulations on all this, man. Thank, Thank you so you. much for, for joining me today and showing all the viewers your beautiful art studio there. Thank you for having me, Rich. All right, man. Thank you so much. Hey, to all the listeners out there, I've got an email address for you, the Rich Redman Show at gmail.com. And as always, be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and view. We sure appreciate it. Keep coming back for the good stuff. We'll be here. Thanks, Ruben. This has been the Rich Redman Show. Subscribe. Rate and follow along at richredman.com forward slash podcasts.